put the wheels back. Doesn't really matter. Uh, the wheels are the same. You can swap these out. But we'll start with the top one here to the cam. We should put some thread locker on here and then we'll get the one for the oil pump drive. Good. And then I've got the new tensioner. I've already prepped it by putting the spring on here and just clamp it up in the vise. Put a sprint in there. That just kind of sits in here. There we go. And a washer for that. This drives the oil pump. So you can take the cam belt off. You'll just drive this thing and uh, that'll turn the oil pump and you will build up some oil pressure. You have to go around. You can do that on the B230 without it interfering, so that's good. Got that pointing straight up, the little dot there. We'll fill that in later. Guess we'll just line that up with the zero right there. And <laughs> hope for the best, basically. That's what we're gonna have to do right now. I don't really care about these lines on this belt here. Double check it up here at the cam later. Okay, so we got the belt on. Okay, so we got that on. This is not a how to change your cam belt video anyway. But I want to torque these first. I want to make sure that we don't forget those. There we go. So that leaves us with this big bolt. But we'll do that when we have the uh, flywheel on. Just got to remember to do it. to undo that again. Uh, what is it? It's 4.27 in the morning. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shove this thing in there and wish me luck. Hopefully I won't run into too many issues, but we'll see what happens. All right, see you guys later. So let's see here if we can get some oil pressure. We're looking for somewhere around two and a half, three bars, I guess. Not really sure what it's supposed to be at idle. We're gonna put this in speed one, and hopefully this will work. Never done this before, but we got oil in. Yeah, baby. I'm thinking I should pull it up to three bars and then turn the crank slowly. I mean, there's definitely oil coming up to the cams and everything. Let's 
So we've built up some oil pressure, which is nice. Uh, next thing that we're gonna check is the fuel pressure. Make sure we have that. But yeah, I think that's a, that's a pretty good success right there. Pumped it around for a while, no leaks, what I can see. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, prime the fuel. So what I've done is I've taken this tire valve out of the fuel rail up here, and I've just uh, put a hose on here, like straight on to where this goes into, and it's gone down into this bucket. And so that's, it's basically just gonna free flow straight into the bucket from the fuel rail when I turn the ignition. This is just because I wanna flush anything that might be inside of the fuel rail uh, and also the, uh, the fuel pipes here from when the car's been standing and stuff. You never know, there could be a little tiny speck of, of uh, sand or something that's gone in there. I mean, the car has been outside. Oh, look at that. We got some fuel, okay, that's good. Now we know that that's primed. All right, so let's check out the fuel pressure now. It's like a tire valve that you got going on here. All right, so I'm gonna cycle the ignition and let's see what we get. That's it? No way, we need more than that. I gotta check this out. I got 3.4 bars. So, I mean, that's actually a little bit more than we should have. Yeah, fuel pressure is slightly high. I have run this car with this pressure regulator and it, I haven't had any issues, uh, but that is definitely something worth noting that it is uh, producing a little bit of an overpressure and should probably be replaced. Anyway, we got fuel pressure, it's not leaking. We have oil pressure, that's not leaking. All right, you guys with me? Let's see if this thing leaks. I bet you it's gonna leak somewhere. If it doesn't leak somewhere, I'm gonna be really surprised. I am going to, whoa. I'm gonna be replacing this canister. And uh, yeah, I know you shouldn't be using regular water and we're not gonna be doing that either but I just wanna make sure that everything is leak free before I pour some uh, coolant in there. You know what guys? I think it's time. I think it's time to fire this thing up. I see one thing that's missing. We don't have the grounding cables for the cylinder head. There should be two grounding wires going to the firewall. Let's fix that. All right, well, here we go. Here we go. All right. Okay, so it did not want to start. So I started doing the basics, checking out, you know, the regular stuff. And it turns out my ignition wires were all wonky. So hopefully, it's good now. Uh, of course, I trusted a picture online. All right, let's see what we got. That wasn't me going on the gas, by the way. I think the idle air engine is trying to find out where idle is. We're gonna run this thing for at least five minutes. We am a little bit uncertain about the turbo. Turbo could be bad, I'm not sure. We got no warning lights. Which is good, we're almost up to operating temperature. I'm gonna turn on full heat. Ooh, it's hot in here now. It's running pretty rough though, I gotta say. Something is off. 
Uh, can't really tell you what right now, but something needs an adjustment somewhere. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drain the oil while it's hot and we'll take that oil filter off, throw that away, put another oil filter on, fill it up with oil again, and uh, then we're going to run the car for maybe a, a day or two. And then we're going to exchange the oil again and put the real oil in there. All right, well, that's it. See you guys later. Hurry up, hi.